this morning we are holding a virtual voter town hall and i think i just want to take a moment for us to just think about the severity of what's happening right now across the country i think it is imperative for us to understand that we can't have a conversation about the importance of voting without talking about the importance of um, civil disobedience and unrest and why it is that we're doing that so we know that voting is one of the many ways in which people everywhere, but I think particularly disenfranchised people and Black people can utilize their voices to really feel heard. At a time where we know that civil unrest happens because people don't feel heard, um, I can't think of a better time to have this conversation. So I ask that as we have this conversation today with some sister friends, and of course with Reverend Jesse Jackson, that we move in the spirit of what makes the most sense in terms of a call to action or several calls to action, how we can mobilize as a people with our vote, but most importantly with our overall political power. So thank you so much for um, allowing me to moderate this morning. So this is a national voter town hall, um, elections in the era of coronavirus. I'll turn it over first to Kristen Clark, my good sister, um, the president and executive director of the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights Under the Law. And she's been saving our voting rights all over the country. So Kristen, thank you and good morning. Good morning. It is so good to be here with everybody. Um, Dr. King said, a riot is the language of the unheard. My heart is heavy thinking about the protests and demonstrations that have been playing yeah. out from coast to coast. But I know that right next to the power of the protests is the power of our vote. And in 2020, the power of our vote and our voices matters now more than ever. I think about the police brutality, the police violence that we're contending with, and the pandemic, which has hit African Americans harder than any other community. This is a public health crisis that really impacted the country, but it's impacted Black folks in a particularly deep way. So we're dealing with pandemic on top of pandemic right now. Um, and it's moments like this that I think for Black people that make clear why our votes matter because we're gonna need officials at the table for us at every level who are fighting for us and fighting to help us get out of this deep, dark hole that we're in. We're gonna need officials at the city level, the state level, the federal level that can help us figure out how do we get out of this economic crisis that's gripping the country? How do we deal with the systemic discrimination that infects our health care system? How do we deal with police brutality and police violence that has gone unchecked for far too long? Angela, I hear you on focusing on the work at hand. And so that's what I want to talk about. The pandemic has turned our voting system upside down. There are about eight states holding primary elections on Tuesday and several states holding primaries throughout the month of June. Then we're going to get a chance to kind of catch our breath until November, November 3rd, 2020. Here's what we got to do right now. One, we gotta make sure that our folks, everybody in our network, our family members, people we go to church with, people we go to school with, we gotta make sure that folks are registered to vote. We know that um, purging of the voter rolls is a real thing, right? So even if you think you're registered, now is actually a critical time to make sure you are still indeed registered and active registered and that you are on the rolls and able to exercise your voice in 2020. Um, and here's the other thing. There are millions of people across the country who actually are not yet registered. We've got campuses shut down, churches shuttered, grassroots activists who can't do the door knocking, right? And normally those are, are ways that we organically bring unregistered Black folks onto the roll. So we've got a lot of work to do to fill in those gaps. The uh, primary elections and general elections also require that we figure out what do we do to exercise voice? How do you get your hands on an absentee ballot application? How do you get an absentee ballot cast successfully? And the rules vary state by state. Some states require that you get your ballot application notarized. Um, there's some states that require that even when you put that absentee ballot in the envelope, that you sign the back of the envelope, that you put your address, and if you fail to do those things, they may not count your ballot. So we've got a lot of work to do to make sure that we get this right. Here's the one thing that I wanna ask everybody who's watching to do right now. 
I want you to pull out your phone and to plug in 866 our vote 866-OUR-VOTE. This is the number that anchors the Election Protection Coalition, a program that's been in place for 20 years strong. It is a nonpartisan voter protection program, and we work 365 days a year to answer all of those questions. How do you get registered? How do you vote absentee? What is the date for the primary election? So I want you to plug that number into your phone. I want you to send that out to everybody in your network. Now more than ever, we need to make sure that we have voice in every election happening this season. Well, first of all, good morning, everyone. And I want to just you know, say good morning to Reverend Jackson, to thank him again for leading the way yet again, always. Thank you for you know, risking your life and going to Minneapolis this uh, week and uh, speaking out for justice and compelling justice, along with the amazing grassroots organizations like Nakima Le Levy, the Black Lives Matters, Minneapolis, and all the great groups there. I want to thank you for that. Uh, we've been working in coalition, and Angela, you should know that you know Reverend Jackson, RPC, and the Transformative Justice Coalition works hand in glove. We've been working on you know, what we call a voter justice initiative, and as part of that initiative, we've been doing you know a lot of the work that you're going to hear over and over from the rest of us today, working with the ninety percent reduction in voter registration all over the country uh, because the DMVs have been that are closed and many of the states have been closed, the public service agencies, public assistance agencies, uh, because uh, religious institutions have been closed, because civic organizations haven't been able to do the kind of one-on-one -on -one rallies and other kinds of voter registration movements. What we have seen is this 90% reduction. So what do we do? because we have 13 states that have no online voter registration as a state, meaning that they do not push it, they do not have it on their websites. So what we are trying to do is to regroup, to reset our clocks. And one of the things we're talking about now uh, that we're seeing uh, groups use that's working. And the problem is, is that, um, you know, we saw in Kentucky, for example, that where Mitch McConnell is running against Amy McGrath, that in February, they had 7,200 voter registrations. In March, they had 500, not even 10% uh, of what they had had in the past. Uh, we've seen this trend line all over the country. So it's very urgent that we think about new ways of voter registration. Online voter registration traditionally only accounts for 25% of all voter registrations. So one of the things groups are doing that's very creative is they created what they call drive up voter registration, where they have drive up voter registration centers. Uh, that's something we ought to be thinking about all over the country. Other groups have been putting voter registration information into the grocery bags, at the pantries, at the uh, long lines where you've seen hours of people having to wait to get a bag of food. What we've done to this country's economy is unbelievable. But that's another way of reaching out that we would not have been doing normally. So we got to be creative. We got to set up phone trees. Voter contact systems are critical right now. We have to be very clear that on the statewide level with the RNC uh, saying that they're going to put 50,000 white vigilantes, former military, former cops, active off-duty cops, at our polls to intimidate and challenge black and brown voters, that we need to have a state by state attack on that plan. There's a way of stopping it. I've stopped these plans before, uh, and there's good ways of stopping them, but we have to do the work. So that requires you know, good organization by all of us to come together and to do a good job of confronting governors, confronting SBIs, all the other groups that can stop this, uh, because there's no reason why we should allow white vigilantes to intimidate and threaten our voters who are already taking their lives into their hands voting in person. Uh, as to vote by mail, listen, everybody, vote by mail is wonderful for white people. Wherever it's used, white 
voter right participation goes up significantly. In Wisconsin, it went up by 14%. Unbelievable. Fantastic turnout of progressive white voters. What happened in Milwaukee? Milwaukee, it went down by 30%. Voter participation among Blacks was down 30%. We're seeing this trend line uh, in other states uh, as we're, as you know, the application process, there's a big difference between the application participation rates for Blacks and whites in Pennsylvania. We're seeing uh, what happened in Patterson, uh, New Jersey. We're seeing these trend lines. Let's be very clear that what we got to have is what's called voter options. We got to have more than vote by mail. We got to also have drive up voting. There's uh, in those states that people talk about Washington and Oregon that people are so proud of because they do all vote by mail. They have drive up voting also. They allow you to drive up and drop off your ballot right at the polling site uh, where they have the kangaroos. Those are people in big aprons who, who take your ballots. They're poll workers who collect the ballots. They have drive up curbside voting. They have uh, you know, other drive-through voting options. Give people these options. We also need Pennsylvania, because of the low application rate, has just yesterday instituted drop-off boxes. Uh, Maryland has that system. A lot of states do. It's a very effective way of people who don't trust the mail being able to actually see their ballot deposited. The other system that you gotta have, of course, is expanded early voting and you gotta, uh, because early voting is the best way for our people to know what's going on and you gotta have, you know, some form of, of safe, safe uh, on part, on site voting. That means you gotta get rid of the machines that can't be cleaned. That, and there are several of them that are in use that cannot be disinfected between voters. That means that you gotta make sure that every voter has PPE, not just poll workers, but no voter should be in there without their, what should be standing in line without a mask and gloves. We gotta walk those lines and make sure people have the proper PPE. We gotta make sure that all the poll workers are protected. These are just things that are new that we gotta do in this era. And we just have to unite.